Okay, well, hello, everybody. This is Professor Sam Lanzafami again, and today we're going to talk about depreciation. So let me just write that down here. And just so you know, there are actually multiple ways that companies can depreciate their fixed assets or long-term assets, as some people call them. In fact, some people even call them plant assets, but I'll refer to them as our long-term assets. And remember, the definition of a long-term asset is an asset you expect to last for more than a year. So typically those assets, the way companies write them off, is that they depreciate them. So there are a few techniques that are used in the accounting realm. One is called the straight line depreciation. A second one is called units of activity. Some people call it units of production. And then there's a third technique called the double declining balance method. And there's actually a fourth one, which is called Some of the Year's Digits, but usually that's found in some intermediate books. So we'll just focus on these three accounting ones. Uh, there's also a tax style of depreciating, which is different than the accounting style. And the tax one is called Makers, Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. So just to throw that out there, that if you are you know, running a business, you got to keep track of your depreciation under accounting procedures, which is one of these three. And in addition, you have to record depreciation separately for accounting for tax purposes. So you got to kind of keep two separate set of books, which is absolutely insane. This is something that needs to be addressed and should have been addressed over the last, I don't know, half century and still is not. But I guess, uh, don't shoot the messenger here, I guess. So let's talk about these three techniques. I'd have to tell you that straight line is probably the easiest of the three. It is the most commonly used one because of its ease. Uh, and what you can expect with straight line depreciation is that you'll get a similar answer year after year after year. So once you calculate the depreciation, you can use that amount every year of that asset's life. Units of activity or units of production, this technique uh, basically has nothing to do with time and everything to do with usage. So however many units you use, how many copies you make, how many miles you drive, whatever the, the unit uh, distinction happens to be, then uh, you use that to help you calculate your depreciation. Um, one thing that is unique about it is that you usually don't get the same results every year as you do under straight line. If you do, it's more of a coincidence. In addition, this units of activity or units of production method, it is used when you are dealing with natural resources and you are depleting. The units of activity method is used when it comes to depletion as well as depreciation. So it kind of wears two hats. And then you have the third one, which is the double declining balance method. This method is an accelerated depreciation method. <clears throat> which means you get to take a lot of depreciation in the earlier years, but then you don't have that much left towards the end. So you kind of have to roll the dice a little bit. But I can tell you, no matter which technique you use, you will get the same total amount of depreciation. It's just that how is it spread out? So let's talk about an example here. So let's come up with one here. Let's say we have cost being $100,000. And let's say this fake item that we have has a salvage value. Now, salvage value is kind of like what would you get for it at the end of its life if you were to trade it in or sell it? So what, what is its value at the end of its life? Let's pretend we can get 10 grand for it. And let's also assume that the estimated life, 
will make it uh, five years or 50,000 units. And then we can also do the second technique based on that. <clears throat> so we'll call this our data box. And we'll kind of keep this over to the side here. And we may need to add a few little bit more tidbits. So if you're copying this or writing it as I go, uh, you might want to uh, leave a little space for yourself. Okay, so you can add a little bit more data as we go along. Okay. <clears throat> so if I want to do the straight line depreciation method, the abbreviation for straight line, by the way, is SL. Units of activity usually goes by UA. If you're using the term units of production, we typically see UP. And the double declining balance method, that's DDB. Those are just some common abbreviations for those titles. So when it comes to straight line, let's do straight line down here. The formula to do straight line is you take your original cost and you subtract out your salvage value and you divide it by your estimated life in years. So estimated life in years. That's the formula. So if we take the data that was given, we're going to take in the numerator $100,000 and subtract the salvage value of $10,000. And then we're going to divide that by five years. Clean up the top, come out to $90,000 on the top. And we're going to divide that by five years. And if you do that math, you would have come up with $18,000. So every single year for the next five years, you'll be able to write off $18,000. The adjusting entry that would be made for this information, and remember that's ultimately the goal of why we're doing this as a company, is we're trying to figure out what is the write-off that we're, in, that we're able to get. So a company would debit something called depreciation expense. You may remember this from, you know, uh, chapter three of accounting where you learned about adjusting entries. And you may have actually used this particular uh, straight line technique then. So this probably is a review. And you would credit something called accumulated depreciation for that same $18,000, okay? So no matter what answers we get from these other ones, you ultimately will have to do this journal entry. It's just that your amounts may differ from each technique that we do. So we'll just put this in green and we'll keep it over here, uh, over to the side. <clears throat> While I'm at it here, let me uh, come up with a little little table. We'll go um, SL for straight line, UP for units of production, DDB for double declining balance. And over here, we'll have a vertical column called year. So year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. And as we just discovered, we would end up with $18,000 every year. Whoops. Let's try that again. See if I can take that shortcut. It still won't let me do it. That's okay. But bottom line is we're going to get $18,000 every year. And what I want to point out is that if we were to total all of these, no matter what technique I share with you, the total will be 90. So in other words, max depreciation, you can never have more than the max. And max depreciation is cost 
minus the salvage value. So 100 minus the 10. So if you're wondering how I came up with 90 so fast, it's just that I just looked over here and went 100 minus 10. But I can double check that and go 18 times 5, and that also will give me 90. But no matter what technique we deal with here, you're always going to have $90,000 as the max. You can't have more than that. So a lot of people say, hey, let me pick this double declining balance method because I get a lot of depreciation early. Yeah, but I get a lot less later. No matter how I slice it, 90000 is the most I can have under each of these techniques. So it really just boils down to how do you want to split up that 90 over these particular periods, okay? So just want to throw that out there so that nobody is shocked when we see some of these results. Okay, so we've done straight line. Let's do all these techniques in a particular color so that they stand out. So now let's do units of production. Units of production is very similar, or units of activity, however you want to call it, is very similar to straight line. So you're going to go costs, original cost, minus the salvage value, and you're going to divide it by the estimated life, just like before, except this time the estimated life is in units. And the result of doing this will give us basically a unit rate or a depreciation rate, like $5 per unit, $10 an hour, like our, like our hourly wages. Those are unit rates. So this is like a two-step process. So once you know your depreciation rate, you will then take that depreciation rate. Let me move it down to here. <clears throat> And you will then multiply that depreciation rate by the actual units in that particular year, and that will give you your depreciation. So this one requires us to do it in two steps. Okay. So in order to help us, let me add some more information here. Let's go uh, over here. We'll write actual units. Remember, we had estimated life was five years or 50,000. Let's put an or there just so we don't get confused later on. So that was the actual data. And now I'm going to give you actual units. So let's say in year one, year two, and year three, even though this thing may have a five-year life, it doesn't mean that the actual units always concur. Let's make this go to four years. So let's say in the first year, I'll use 50,000 as my base. Let's say in the first year, this machine used 10,000 units. Let's say in the second year, it used 15,000. Let's say in the third year, it used 15,000. And let's say in the last year it used 10,000. Now, I don't know what they actually are, but we're just pretending those are the actual uh, amounts in those particular years. Okay? So that information would be given to you if you're wondering, how would I know that? It would be given. So what we're going to do is in year one, you're going to take your cost minus salvage. Remember, we did cost minus salvage, salvage value over here. So 100 minus 10. So we're going to have $90,000 in the numerator. And we're going to divide that by the estimated life, which is the 50,000 units. And when you do that, you come up with $1.80 per unit. That is the depreciation unit rate. You would then multiply this unit rate by the actual units. So remember the 10,000 that we had here. And then I'm just going to copy the results all the way down. <clears throat> so in all of these scenarios, year one, two, three, four, and five, 
if there was a fifth year, I would be doing the same thing. I'm just going to change the, the number here. This is year two. This is year three. And this is year four. So we'll just copy and paste it a little bit. So notice that in year one, two, three, and four, and if it was longer than that, I would have continued. But once I calculate the dollar eighty, that dollar eighty is fixed for the life of that asset. Okay, so you're now going to take that dollar eighty and basically just multiply that by the units. So we're going to take ten thousand, multiply by one point eighty, and you get eighteen thousand. And let's see if it'll do this math for me now. It does. How nice. <clears throat> so notice in this particular case, whoops, that I get eighteen thousand dollars of depreciation the first year, which just coincidentally happens to equal what we got for straight line. But I made up that ten thousand. Don't forget. It may really have been nine thousand two hundred and twenty. Who knows? But the bottom line is, I'm going to take these numbers. And I'm going to move them to my little chart. And we are going to double check the fact that do we really end up with 90,000? And let's do a little equal sum. And we're going to add up this column. And notice it does equal 90,000. So I was able to get to 90,000 within four years in this particular case. But remember, I'm not allowed to take more than 90 in this particular scenario. Okay, so I just don't want you to um, be, you know, misled by what's happening here. No matter what technique I use, whether it's straight line, units of production, or double declining, the most I'm allowed is whatever costs minus salvages. That's my max depreciation. Okay, so now we've done units of production. And we've also done straight line. And just so you know, I am doing this under a scenario which is a full year. And I'm going to show you how to do this exact same stuff under partial year once I'm done with this example. So right now, these are the answers for partial year. And by the way, this little adjusting entry that I did here, if I was doing it for units of production, I would do this entry in year one for 18. In year two, I would do it for 27. Year three, I would do it for 27. And in year four, I would do it for 18. So whatever amounts we ended up with will end up in our adjusting entry. Now, <clears throat> a company is not going to do both of these. They're going to choose which technique they want to use. So they're going to figure out what seems to be the best way for us to write our costs off. And they're going to pick one and go with it. Or they could pick this other technique, which is the double declining balance method. This one, you have to do year one to get to year two. And you got to do year two to get to year three. So you can't just jump around like in straight line and units of production. You can't just automatically do that. So you have to go in the right sequence. <clears throat> so in year one, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a formula <clears throat> that will kind of help us do this technique. And it goes something like this. You're going to take your original cost again. But this time, instead of subtracting out salvage value, you're going to be taking out your accumulated depreciation. So definitely a different starting point to this. And the result of doing this little calculation is something we call book value. You would then take your book value and you would multiply it by another type of depreciation rate, except this one is our double declining balance rate. I'm going to take this rate and we're going to multiply it, excuse me, um, we're going to multiply it by the book value, and that will give us our depreciation for a full year. So take your book value, multiply it by your double declining balance rate, 
and that'll give you your depreciation for the full year. How do you get this double declining balance rate? Well, it's actually not that hard. First thing you need to know is that the double declining balance rate is basically the doubling of the straight line rate. So if you know your straight line rate, all you got to do is double it. How do you get a straight line rate? Well, let me show you. Let me do that over here. You get the straight line rate by taking the number 100% and dividing it by the estimated life in years. So in our example, if we take the number 100%, what's our estimated life? If you look at the yellow box where our data was, our estimated life in years was five years. So if you take 100% divide it by five years, you basically get 20% per year. So that means your straight line rate is 20%. So in other words, if you were to look at your hand right now and hold up all five of your fingers, assuming you have them all, um, and you were to just say, take your pinky, that's 20%, then the finger above that, that's 20%, your middle finger, that's 20%, index finger 20%, your thumb 20%, 20 times 5, 100%. So something that has a five-year life depreciates at a 20% clip. So if I now say, so what's your double declining balance rate? Well, double the 20%. So your DDB rate would be 20% times 2. which is 40%. So that's the rate that you're going to use every year in this calculation. Remember, in the units of production, we used $1.80 for every year. That was fixed. Now what's going to be fixed in this technique is the, the rate. Let me get rid of this one here. It's bothering me. Okay, let's put the one here. Okay, so let's go through this example. We've got our original cost of $100,000. And under this technique, we have yet to depreciate. So in the first year, your accumulated depreciation is zero in this initial computation. So therefore, the first time you calculate depreciation, you're using 100,000, because 100 minus zero is 100. You will then take that 100,000 and you will multiply it by your double declining balance rate and you get 40 grand. So in this technique, a company using double declining balance will end up with $40,000 as their first year's depreciation. You can see that a lot of people would like that, right? You get almost half of it right out of the way. But it then tapers off to almost nothing as you go further and further. So let's go down to year two. 100,000, let's subtract out the 40,000 that we just calculated. That's going to give us 60,000. And we're going to multiply that by 40%. And when you multiply 60,000 times 40%, that's going to give you 24,000. Still doing pretty good compared to straight line at this stage. But remember, no matter what, I can't go over 90, at least in this example, because I get 90 from taking my original cost minus my salvage value. So now we go to year three. In year three, Again, I start with the original cost of 100000 My accumulated depreciation is how much now? How much is my accumulated depreciation? If you said 24, that's incorrect. 24 is my depreciation from last year. 40 was from the first year. So my accumulated depreciation is 64000 because it's accumulated depreciation. Right, so that's going to give us 36,000, which we're now multiplied by 40%. And let me take out my calculator. Actually, I don't need to take out my calculator, I can do it right here. 
So 36,000 multiplied by 0.40, that's going to give me $14,400 as my depreciation for year three. So let's go put it over here. Okay, so now let's go into year four. In year four, again, I start with my original cost, 100000 and I want to subtract out my accumulated depreciation now. It's the 40 plus the 24 plus the 14, 4. So that's going to give me 78, 4. And I now want to subtract that 78, 4 from the 100,000. That's going to give me 21,600. I want to multiply that 21, 6 by 40%. And let's see what it gives us this time. So 78.4, whoops, let's undo that. There we go. So 78.4, we subtracted from the 100, that gave us 21.6. So 21.6 multiplied by the 40%. That's going to give us 86.40. 86.40. Okay, so let's take a quick little pulse of how much we have so far. So if I were to add up all of my numbers to this point, you will notice I'm already at 87,040. Okay. That means I only have 2,960 left to go. If I were to continue using the approach that I've used in year one, two, three, and four, when I go to do it in year five, the result is going to be higher than 2,960. So what I'll do in this final year is just plug in this 2,960, because if I use the numbers that I would get with the math, it would put me over my allotted number so I have to I have to basically put in 2960 I can't put anything higher than that so if you went through and followed through with this you would see we would actually end up with something like five or six thousand dollars and I wouldn't be able to use it okay so let's put this in blue and that is the double declining balance method so these are the three techniques that you're responsible for in your chapter for depreciation. Now the answers that we have come up with would be for a full year. If you bought the asset at some other point other than January, beginning of January, then you would have to do things under a partial year. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to redo the same example. It won't take as long because a lot of the information is the same. In fact, exactly the same is the units of production method. This method right here is not affected by time. So if you were asked to do a problem for you know um, an asset that you bought in, let's say, September, these answers would be the exact same thing as they are in January because it's not based on time, it's based on activity. So the UP method uh, is unaffected by time. So the only two that we're going to focus on are the straight line and double declining balance method. So let's rewrite this data. Let's go over here. Just move it down to here. Okay, so here's our data. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to add a little piece to this. And the piece will be, let's assume we got it. Let's make it October 1st. So that's the only change is this October 1st issue. Okay. So if you take our costs minus salvage divided by estimated life like we did before, so again, you're going to go 100,000 minus 10. It's going to give us 90,000 in the numerator. 
and we're going to divide it by the five years, just like before. It's going to give us 18,000, just like before. <clears throat> okay. Here's the difference, though. In that first year, I didn't have it for the whole year. I got it October 1st. So I only had it for all of October, all of November, all of December. I had it for only three months out of the 12 months in the year. Okay. And I need to change that. <clears throat> so instead of getting 18,000 in the first year, I'm only allowed a quarter of that. So basically on my calculator, I'm going to go 18,000 times 3 divided by 4, and I get not that. That's not right. Let's try that again. Let's take 18,000. <clears> we're going to multiply it by 3, and we're going to divide by 12, not 4. There we go. $4,500. So in the first year, instead of being able to write off 18,000, this company would only be able to write off 4,500. Okay, that would be year one. Year two, they would get the full 18,000. Year three, they would get the full 18,000. Year four, they would get the full 18,000. Year five, they would get the full 18,000. And believe it or not, they would be able to go into a sixth year and recoup those nine months that they lost out on in the first year. So it's not like it went to waste. So we're going to take 18,000 and we're going to multiply that by 9, divide by 12. And then there is the amount 13,500 in a sixth year. So if I put this up here, this would be year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. And I get to go into a sixth year to recover the amount that I was entitled to. Remember, I'm entitled to $90,000 worth of depreciation. So let's see if we were able to get there. And we did. Okay. So if I hadn't taken the other, you know, nine months here, if I hadn't taken the other nine months, I would have fallen short of my $90,000. So under a partial year, in the first year I get less, but I get, in, I get to go into an extra year to recoup the months that I missed in that first year. So this is straight line under a partial year scenario. Okay. And what made it partial year was the fact that it was acquired and put in use in October. All right. Hopefully that makes sense to you. <clears throat> As I said earlier, the Units of production method, the answers would be exactly the same. Completely unaffected by time. But what about double declining? Under double declining, let me move this over a little bit here <clears throat> so that I can do it right next to it. Under double declining, let's put here full year. Full year example, Jan 1. And over here, we'll do partial year example. We'll go October 1st again. All right. 
So let me copy all of this information. Okay. <clears throat> so now, in year one, everything is the same up until that 40,000, except now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that by three months out of 12. So instead of multiplying it by 100%, or 12 months out of 12, even though I didn't actually show that before it was assumed, this time we're only allowed three months worth of depreciation. So I'm going to take 40,000, multiply it by three, and divide it by 12. And my amount of depreciation allowed in year one is $10,000 compared to the 40 that I had for a full year. But I only had it for three months. So I can't take 12 months worth of depreciation. That's cheating. So I go into year two, and again, looks the same, 100,000. But notice now, instead of subtracting 40, I can only subtract 10. That leaves me with 90,000, which I now want to multiply by 40%. And when I do that, that's going to give me 36,000. I don't have to multiply it by 3 twelfths or 9 twelfths because for the second year, I had it for the full amount of time. So 36,000 would be my year two answer. So we'll put this one in bold, and we'll put this answer in bold. Let's just do year three just to make sure we're okay. In year three, 100,000. What's my accumulated depreciation? Well, the two that I put in bold, total of 46,000 so far, which would then give me 54,000, which I now want to multiply by 40%. And let's see what that gives us. 54,000 multiplied by 0.40, and that gives me 21,6. And then we would just continue in that same approach. Um, I don't know if we would end up into a sixth year. Um, remember in this first example, we actually in year five ended up having a plug figure. So chances are there'll probably be some plug scenario here as well. But you would continue on uh, in the same way that I've done it here. Okay. So now you've seen an example of full year depreciation and partial year depreciation under the three techniques. And of those three, the units of production method is the one that was completely unaffected. And let me just mention one other thing. I think I said it at the beginning, but if you were doing depletion, depletion is um, when you are uh, dealing with a natural resource. So if a natural resource has to be accounted for, you would use the units of production method the adjusting entry would be this. You would debit let me copy this and then change some things. You would debit something called depletion expense, and you would credit something called accumulated depletion. So basically, sub substitute the word depletion in for where you had depreciation, and you're good to go. So when you deplete, you're basically depleting the ground of some substance, some natural resource, oil, gold, mineral deposits, things like that, diamonds. So whenever you deplete the ground, you're dealing with a natural resource. And if you have a natural resource, then you have to use depletion expense instead of depreciation expense. And instead of having accumulated depreciation, you have accumulated depletion. So depletion and depreciation, very, very similar in nature. 
if you were dealing with an intangible asset, like a patent, copyright, good, goodwill, things along those lines, then you would have amortization expense. So depreciation expense, depletion expense, amortization expense, these are three different ways of writing stuff off over time, systematically writing things off. Okay, well, I hope this helped. I'll be doing another uh, video here relating to what happens when you sell and exchange plant assets. I'll be doing that uh, soon, so look forward to that. So again, thank you. This is Professor Sam Lanzafame, and I will be continuing more of these videos as we go further. All right, you guys, take it easy. Hope to see you down the road, and I hope these are helping you. Take it easy. Bye-bye.